So here we are with Daniel Smith. How are you doing, Daniel? Hey, man. How are you doing? Good, good. So he's uh, not only part of the pit crew, he changes rear tires on uh, Tony Stewart's car, the number 14 team, and he also works in the shop. Also a personal friend of mine since high school, freshman yeah. year, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. That's when I came over here. Yeah. So taking it way back, Daniel, <laughs> uh, what's, your, what's your very first memory of the Daytona 500? Um, I would have to say my first memory, you know, I didn't grow up in a family uh, that we weren't really focused around racing, uh, but growing up in Concord, uh, you know, you're, you got neighbors, you got friends whose parents work in racing or they work in racing. So, you know, I kind of always hung out with people around it, but never really paid that much attention to it. So I would have to say really probably 2001 was the first time that I actually vividly remember, you know, watching the Daytona 500 uh, with some friends and then I don't even think I caught the last part but then heard about Dell Sr. Uh, getting in that crash and uh, you know obviously that was big news all around the world so really that was my first time uh, remember or recalling the Daytona 500. Wow so when was um, you know once once you actually started working for some race teams I mean how did how did you come about working for I mean, Stewart. I mean, changing tires. How did you how did you yeah. come about doing that? Um, it started back, you know, when we graduated in 02, I went to ECU for a short stint um, and couldn't really figure out what I wanted to do. I uh, ended up coming back home and uh, had a friend that I grew up with in uh, my neighborhood. And uh, I think his mom just randomly said something to my mom one day about he was going to NTI and, you know, he's going to try and get in NASCAR and all that. And you know, I didn't really know I, what I wanted to do with my life, so I was like, you know what, I'll, I'll give it a shot. And, you know, I mean, them guys on TV, I'm sure I could change tires or do something like that. Uh, so I went to NTI, uh, and then uh, from there I heard about a school called uh, 5 Off 5 On that uh, Jeff Hammond was running. And uh, so I ended up going over there, and what they did, they focused more on the over-the-wall part. Uh, the NTI was more focused on, you know, the fabrication part and the mechanical side of it. Uh, and they also focused on like dealership cars and stuff like that. So um, I would heard from other people that, you know, if you focus on the over the wall, that that was easier to get yourself in the door, you know, because, you know, not as many people can do that as they can be a mechanic or, or whatever and stuff like that. Um, so I went over there and uh, was doing good over there and found out about a tryout at Haas. It was then Haas CNC racing. Uh, Stuart, he was still over at Gibbs, I think. And... Uh, so got a tryout there. Me and uh, my carrier still now to this day, Shrek. Uh, we got a tryout over there, and uh, Booty Barker ended up hiring us, uh, and that was 2004, I believe. And uh, we started changing on Jason Leffler's car that year, and then uh, the next year, then we got to move to the Cup Series. Wow. So, you know, working your way through the ranks of like five off, five on, and and doing um, the pit school and. I think you were, didn't you work for some truck teams, like doing the pit crew there and some market teams slightly? Yeah, so what 5 Off 5 On would do, so you could go over there, you could work out, you could practice. They kind of taught you the basic fundamentals of uh, changing tires or if you wanted to carry tires or jack the car, uh, stuff like that. And they would assemble a crew and they would um, hire you out to other teams. So if there was a lower budget Hooters Pro Cup team or a lower budget truck team, um, or even uh, Bush teams, you know, that didn't have the money to have full-time guys, they could contract us out, we come in, we do a race for them. Uh, so we started doing that, I think I started doing that in 03, and uh, you, know, we, you know, I was doing good. Uh, I was changing more, more predominantly in the Hooters Pro Cup series, ch uh, changed some for Clay Rogers, and uh, I did, I probably only did one race in the truck series, I think it was actually for Brad Kozlowski, back when he was, uh, I think he was, wasn't he driving for his old man? Yeah, he was. Yeah. yeah. So I changed one uh, race for him, I think at Mansfield, Ohio. And um, so then 2004 kept rolling on and uh, got that trial at Haas CNC and started in June of 04. Milwaukee was our first race for Jason Leffler. Wow. So coming up in so coming up in the in this Daytona 500 for 2015, this will be your 10th year. I mean, you've got so much experience at the Daytona 500 now. Has 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 any of the kind of has it lost its luster at all or anything? I mean, such as being like an iconic race to you? I don't think so. I mean, I think the Daytona 500 for for every racer, it's it's ultimately something that you want to you want to check off uh, for your career. Uh, same thing with uh, the Brickyard 400, and then ultimately a championship. 
Um, so it definitely hasn't lost its luster because we haven't had the opportunity to, to win one yet. Um, we've won two of the July races uh, at Stuart Haas Racing, but uh, just haven't closed it out for the 500. And, and Tony Stewart, he's still looking for his first win for the 500. So you know that he's still got that fire. And uh, yeah, man, I mean, it definitely, if anything, it's gained more because you've been there so many times and you just, you just haven't closed it out. And sometimes, you know, it's kind of like a crapshoot when you go down, go down there. I mean, you could be taken out by somebody, somebody else's mess and have nothing to do with it. So, no, if anything, it's, it's became more of a, a race that you want to win. So I was going to ask you, so, you know, Tony's raced for so many years and he hasn't won the Daytona 500, almost kind of like what Dale Earnhardt did years ago. I mean, he, Dale Earnhardt finally won it. Like, is Tony Stewart's focus as far as the Daytona 500, is it different or does he approach the race differently, you think, from, from your perspective? I'm not sure if he approaches it any differently. Um, you know, I, I mean, I, I can't really speak for him, but I mean, I'm sure that, I mean, it's ultimately something he wants to check off. Uh, you know, he, he's got the Brickyard, he's got the championships, he's got everything else. I mean, that's pretty much the last big thing he's got to win, so. Cool. Thanks a lot, Daniel. Thanks hey, for coming on, man. Thanks, man. Daniel Smith, rear tire changer, number 14 car. Now that you've heard my experience of my first Daytona 500, I want to hear your experience of your first Daytona 500 at hashtag myfirst500.